And now it's John Leonard time. Good morning, John. Good morning, Charles. Good morning, John. Good morning, Charles. Good morning, John. Good morning, Harry. It happened this week, a personal loss for all of us here at Sunday Morning. John Leonard, our friend and our broadcast longtime critic, died of complications from lung cancer. He was 69. Into the Valley of Hype rode the reviewer. For nearly 16 years, John Leonard rode to the cultural barricades on our behalf. I haven't seen Oliver Stone's Nixon film yet, opening December 20th, because he won't let me, and he probably has his reasons. Reviewing everything from movies to books to TV shows. Don't tell me there's never anything on television. There's always something on television, and some of it may be better than we deserve. John started at the National Review in 1959, and within a decade, he was editing the New York Times Book Review, highlighting new authors along with books critical of the Vietnam War. From 1975 to 1982, he served as the Times cultural critic at large. I was there at the New York Times when they junked the linotype machines, got rid of typewriters, carbon paper, copy boys, and ashtrays, put up partitions, and put down carpets like a bank. It's Sunday morning on CBS. In 1988, John Leonard came to Sunday morning. I will not embarrass John Leonard on his first day at work by telling him to his face how witty and wise I've always found. He was our reviewer, dictionary, thesaurus, book of quotations, an index of literary allusions all wrapped up into one. I spent half my life reading and the other half watching. This means I don't get out a lot. To paraphrase the author Kurt Vonnegut, a John Leonard review was like a lecture by the smartest man who ever lived. We marveled at the music of John's words, even as we raced to keep up with them. No parades. No parades. And on our 25th anniversary broadcast in 2004, we poked a bit of good-natured fun. In the Velociraptor media culture, serial thrill killers, hitchhiking psychopathic cannibals, and bad seed triffids of all the, the data drizzle and magnetic flash, her gender bending border sexuality, her celebrity recycling of manufactured videotaped, downsized, organ donor, gene spliced, light beard. I not only know what I'm talking about, but it doesn't matter. Of course, to John, it did all matter. Above all, words mattered. Never more so than in the commentary he delivered right here on the Sunday morning after the 9-11 attacks. As in Belfast, Sarajevo, or Beirut, it was suddenly personal, this world of rubble left behind by the kamikazes of kingdom come. The contemptuous purpose of terrorism is to dominate and humiliate, to turn citizens into lab rats and cities into mazes. Terror wants derangement, but it didn't get it. Horror, certainly. All of us had fallen from a hundred stories. And yet we gathered our bodies and our thoughts. And when we went home, we were not terrified. Like a serious book instead of a television movie, we were just a lot more complicated. John Leonard is survived by his mother and his wife, Sue, along with two children, one stepchild, three grandchildren, and by his own count, more than five million published words.